Oh guys, this is a fun one, a much requested video. If you're new to the channel here, welcome, first of all. And secondly, I do mostly cameras, camera accessories, lens reviews, things like that. And uh, I do have a lot of Sony cameras here on the channel because that is the brand that I use for my own personal work. But a lot of people, they're saying, Mark, your quality is second to none. It's outstanding. It's wonderful. How can I look as handsome as you? Well, number one, plastic surgery. Am I right? I have had a ton of work done. But number two, you can get some budget stuff that will still give you a pro look in your little social media empire studio. Now, this stuff is not free. It is not zero dollars. It does cost some, but I have put together what I think is the most cost effective way to have really great quality in your studio. So let's talk about it. So now the gear I'm talking about in this video, I am using in this video. So you are looking at it all right now. And uh, I will be talking about each piece as we move along. But first and foremost, let's talk about the camera. You are looking at my little Dougie. That's what I call him, little ZV-E10, the best bang for buck camera on the planet, in my humble opinion. And uh, I am using the 16 millimeter f1.4 from sigma with that sigma 60 mil f1.4 you get that nice background separation look how it's blurry back there and that background is quite close to me you look at this light here this uh, sl60w see look i am touching that light right now but yet it is blurred out back there because i am using that sigma 1.4 and it lets in so much light i don't have to turn my lights up very high it is a fantastic lens you should get yourself one. So the uh, ZV-E10 comes in at $698, body only, and the Sigma lens is about $350. Now, if you're wondering, I have my tape measure here, how far I am from the camera, I am two feet. Two feet exactly from my little ZV-E10. So you can get this type of field of view sitting quite close. See, I'm touching the lens right now. So uh, this is the field of view you will get two feet away, 16 millimeter. This is always the setup I recommend for talking heads, for interviews, for people on a budget. Even if you're not on a budget, it just looks straight up great. Pro results on a budget. Now, right now I am shooting in S-Log3. If you want to know how I grade this, then you can look over my left shoulder. I will put a video up on how I grade the S-Log3 footage. Now, I will say if you do plan to shoot professionally one day and you have the budget, the FX30 is actually on sale right now. It's 200 bucks off and this is is a beast of a camera. It's overall my favorite video camera to use. It's just set up so well for video. It has a fan in it, so it'll never under overheat, underheat, never overheat under any circumstances. It has uh, two card slots. It's just, you can output raw. You could just put time code in. This thing has a lot of professional features, 10 bit color, of course. So uh, if you're looking to eventually start shooting professionally, then uh, maybe the FX30 is something to look at, but the image quality coming out of the ZVE 10 is, mwah, you know, nothing to complain about there. Now, when you have your fancy camera and your lens, I always recommend manually white balancing when you are in a studio after you set up your lights. So uh, you just get yourself one of these $10 gray cards. It folds out here like that, and uh, you can just point your camera at the gray card and then set your manual white balance and you know what the white balance is in this room. Right now I am set to 5300 Kelvin. These things are like 10 bucks and they fold up super small. Go get yourself one of these. Always carry it in your camera bag or have it in your studio. But you got to mount your camera on something. Little Dougie is wonderful but he definitely cannot levitate so you need a tripod. Now this is one of my favorite tripods. It's from Ulanzi. It is a quick release tripod. The Video F. 38 tripod. They have a new one, the Video Go. Excellent. They're a quick release, but you know what? They are a little bit more expensive than other things I can recommend. And since this video is geared towards as budget friendly as possible, there is a tripod from Small Rig that I can recommend that is not even $100 and uh, will do the job for you here in the studio, especially because we're using the ZV-E10 and the Sigma 16 mil, not a giant heavyweight setup. So uh, this Small Rig tripod is going to be fine. I do love the quick release stuff though, but we're here, we're talking budget. Now, since we're talking about budget, this next thing I'm gonna recommend is not a necessity, but I do recommend it. And that is an external monitor. Of course, you have the flip out screen, 360 degrees on your ZV-E10, but it's always nice to have that bigger screen. It is just, it helps you compose your shot better, helps you set your exposure better. And while I'm using a Ninja 5 right now, let's talk about my favorite budget 
monitor. And that is this right here. This is the Portkeys PT-5 II. It comes in this little Pelican case looking thing. It is great. And one of the reasons I recommend is not only is it a nice monitor that works quite well and it's a full touch screen and it's quite small. It's about the size of an iPhone. It comes with everything you need in that little Pelican case. It has a little sunshade and it has like the clips and the HDMI cords for micro HDMI that the ZV-E10 has or also a full size HDMI if you want to connect it to a different camera. And uh, it also has a little connector there so that you can mount it right on the camera, a little hot shoe connector. And there are other good budget monitors out there. This isn't the only one. It's just one that comes in a complete package. So most external monitors take those Sony NPF style batteries. I will link the ones I use down below and they can also be used for some of the lights I will be talking about towards the end of the video. Now, while an external monitor might not be completely necessary, what is completely necessary is good audio. So you can't just use the camera's audio. It will sound pretty much like garbage. Even from this distance, it is not a great idea to use in a studio the on-camera microphone. When you're outdoors, it's not so bad, especially if you use the little wind muff on the ZV-E10. But inside a studio, getting your voice bouncing off all of the walls and the ceilings, it's just not going to sound great. So what you want to do is get a shotgun mic. Right now, I am using the Rode VideoMic Go 2, and I really like this microphone for various reasons. Number one, it sounds great. It sounds almost as good as some of their really premium microphones from Rode. And uh, you can just plug it straight into your camera and you don't need any batteries. You don't need to charge it. The camera powers the microphone. And that's great because if you're always charging your microphone, sometimes you forget to charge it. It runs out of batteries. This, you plug it in and it just works. You can also use it as a USB mic for your computer. It has all kinds of bells and whistles. It is a really complete microphone for $99. And most importantly, it sounds really good, especially when you do what I'm doing, which is don't put it over on your camera. Put it here on a boom stand. Let me put it into the shot. See, it's right here. Now this mic is about 10 inches from my old yap hole. And the way I did that is I used an extender, a 3.5 millimeter extender cable. I will have that linked below. And I am using just a mic stand that has a boom arm coming out of it. That's an idea I got from Curtis Judd, the master of audio. And uh, it's such a lightweight microphone. It works great with that mic stand and uh, cost effective, easy to use. Perfect. Now we'll talk about something that matters more for your visuals than pretty much anything else, and that is lighting. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can just get one nice light and you are good to go. Good light with a good soft box and you can be as pretty as a pitcher. I would recommend either getting the Amaran 60D or the Small Rig 120RC. The Small Rig 120RC is definitely a better value. You get a light that is twice as bright, so you're covered for more things, bigger spaces, so I would recommend if you can shell out the extra couple of bucks, get the small rig 120 RC, the daylight balanced version. But the uh, Amaran 60D is usually, you know, a few dollars cheaper than the uh, small rig 120 RC. And that will also get the job done if you are in a small studio space. So uh, Amaran is made by Aperture, you know, pick the light that you want, but you definitely want to get a softbox with it. And I will link a small rig softbox below because I think that is the best value softbox. And that is what I'm doing right now. This is the small rig 120 RC with a small rig softbox. And it is just right here, just right outside the frame of the camera. See, this is the camera here and this is the softbox right there. And it has a grid. The grid is important because it keeps the spill down. The light doesn't spill onto your background so much so you can get a nicer look to your background. And while you can get away with that one light with the softbox, I do recommend you at least get a hair light. It's just in the back there in the corner, shining on my head. It's I think that light was like 30 bucks and uh, it just creates a little bit of a shine here on my shoulder and my head to separate me from the background. Let me show you. See, this is the light right here. Just a little flat panel light, a few bucks and uh, helps separate me from the background. Now I will say when it comes to lighting, it is nice to have the three point lighting. So you have one soft box looking at you right here. And then over here, you would have a kicker light, which isn't as powerful as your main key light. And then you have a little rim light, a hair light shining down on you. So if you can do that, great. Let me just 
plug those in and show you what that looks like. So now I have turned on my kicker light to fill in some of those shadows. So it's up to you whether or not you prefer this look or the more contrasty look that I showed you with just the one light. So over here is another small rig 120 RC with a softbox and a grid and then it just evens out my skin a little bit better as i'm getting older i like more of a flat lighting but that is just me if you're young and beautiful maybe you prefer the contrasty look i don't know so in terms of your backdrop that is completely up to you in this studio space i'm just using paper rolls these are savage paper rolls that photographers like to use but the key to your background is going to be once again lighting you got to get yourself some lights they don't have to be expensive but if it's not lit up back there it's uh, not going to look great on camera you got your key light shining on your face but if the background is dark you're going to see noise and grain and things like that you definitely want it uh, you know some lights back there anyway this is just a cheap newer panel which i'll link below and these are two jayun tube lights they're a little bit more expensive than some other tube lights so i'll link some cheaper tube lights down there but you know and that one over there is an aperture mc just hooked in by a magnet to uh, a light that i don't actually have on right now it's not even plugged in so just get some lights for your backdrop doesn't really matter what they are i'll link what i'm using but feel free to experiment put up your bookshelf and your little plant, maybe one of those hanging Edison bulbs, do what you will, make your background look nice, then light it up. So if you have your own suggestions for budget gear that you really like, write it in the comments below so that we can all benefit from it. And I hope this was helpful in some way. And I will be checking out your channel, perhaps your YouTube, your Instagram, your God forbid, your TikTok and your booty popping. Let me know down below what you plan to set your studio up for. And we'll have a nice little discussion about it. Talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye-bye.